welcome to Make Kind Loud, conversations that turn up the volume. And this week, we are talking to Dr. Sabrina Black. Hello, Dr. Black. How are you? I'm wonderful, Louisa. So glad to be here with you, Making Kind Loud. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you are here. I am going to read your bio, tell the people about you, and then we're going to dive right on in. Let's do it. Dr. Sabrina Black is an international speaker, author, counselor, and life coach. She has been working in the community and around the world on five of seven continents for over 25 years, helping people live the abundant life, which is mm -hmm. also the name of her counseling and coaching private practice. She is a high energy, dynamic presenter that impacts audiences with hope, help, and healing. Dr. Black has degrees in counseling and psychology. She is a member of the American Association of Christian Counselors and the president of the National Biblical Counselors Association. She has recently launched Mental Health Monday and the Conversations on Race on Facebook Live Mondays at 7 p.m., where she addresses a series of topics to help people deal with life, relationships, COVID-19 mm -hmm. and beyond. Dr. Sabrina has been married over 35 years. She loves movies, live theater, board games, karaoke, and traveling. Hello, Dr. Black. I love it. <laughs> Hello, Louisa. I love it too. Listen, as you were sharing my bio, I was thinking, man, I miss traveling. I, I'm missing the world and my friends around the world, but I'm so thankful for technology so I can at least still stay connected. Yes. And speaking of around the world, I have my friend Ferg on who's watching all the way in New Zealand. Hey, Ferg. Hey, Ferg. <laughs> <laughs> so, Good Dr. Deal. Black, we uh had the I had the opportunity to be on your conversations on race. Yes. It was such a beautiful experience. So thank you, first of all, for allowing me to join in that panel. But tell me about that and why did you start it in the first place? So listen, the conversations on race, and, and it's funny when I think about that because it was not initially my idea. It was a friend who understands that I'm all about social justice. I'm about making change in the world. It was right after the situation with George Floyd. She contacted me and she says, what are we going to do? We have to have a conversation. We got to talk about this. And I said, I'm not really sure yet. And so her and I dialogued about it. And the next Monday, I think no, it was the next Friday, we put it together because um, she's a uh, Jewish, I'm African-American. And she says, let's start with the conversation as a listening forum and allow Jewish moms to listen to African-American moms about raising sons in this society, dealing with issues of prejudice and discrimination and inequality and equity. And so I thought, let's do it. Now, I got to tell you, Louisa, it was supposed to be a conversation. <laughs> and, and it's so funny because I talk for a living. So I wasn't expecting to still be talking here months later, having more conversations. But that conversation on race that started the listening forum with those moms went for four weeks. We did the whole month of June. And after that, I realized, man, I I'm talking about young men and I have a young man. I, I should have my son on the show. And I thought, you know, I have lots of sons his age around the world. I thought, let's gather those guys together and do a show with them. So we did the conversations on race with the BMWs. And I think after we did the guys, I came back with the women. I said, you got to get some women on the show. That's when you came in. Because we talked about the issue of colorism. And it's not just about being black in the community, but it's within the community as well. And so we talked with a group of African-American women. I think there are about 12 of us on on uh panel. Yes, ma'am. Uh, from light skin to dark skin. Right. The, the, our chocolate sisters, uh, <laughs> from white chocolate to dark chocolate. We got together and had that conversation. And that was a, an intense conversation. And it was supposed to be six weeks. Was, you gotta keep the conversation going. But the cool thing out of that, Louisa, you know, we had started on this book project, Denise and I who was my co-host for the show, her and I started this book project maybe about 18 years ago. And, you know, we both got busy, did live, did other projects, did research and came back together and realized that what we were doing dealing with colorism was not just a black issue, but it's a universal issue. And a lot of people need to learn to love the skin they're in. And so that's the project that we're working on now. And so from that conversation, I'm telling you, it kept right on going. Yeah. We rolled into voting. You know, we were going into that crazy election season. We talked about voting for four weeks. 
came out of voting and now we're dealing with resilience. How do we bounce back after all we've been through with COVID-19, with the racial riots and the protests, with all the propaganda from all the politics we've been dealing with, and then going back to what you do, which is make kind loud. How do we make kind loud and everything that we're dealing with? We're talking about that now. Look at this. The conversations continue. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you are, are such a great moderator and keeping everybody on topic and uh, making sure that the conversation flows so that people can get the information. Because with, you know, with a, a panel, people can over talk, over step, but, but you have you have such a gift of keeping people in order. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Listen, and you got to know it was a challenge on some of those conversations because when people are passionate about what they're sharing, they, they want to get it all out. They want to jump in. And so trying to keep people on track was kind of like, hold on, hold on. But I was really thankful, though, just for the people that were engaged with us in those dialogues and the people who are yet to come. So even now in this conversation we're having, we're dealing with the issue of resilience and that bounce back. And, you know, because people have dealt with so much, we had a, a series of millennials on who talked about tragedies that they've lived through, what they're dealing yeah. with in their lifetime, how to bounce back from that. You know, so it's more than just the election, but we have to bounce back as a society and figure out how to be kind one to another. So even up coming up next week, we're going to have a mixture of cultures online talking about how to be kind to one another. I love that. I love that. So what got you? So you're a doctor. So what mm -hmm. made you want to pursue this career? So pursuing this career, you know, I, I'm in mental health and pursuing this career. I've always wanted to know what made people tick. <laughs> you know, what were they thinking when they did what they did? And so I wanted to know that from a child. But beyond just wanting to know why people did what they did, I really wanted to help people process the pain that they were going through and the life tragedies that they were dealing with. You know, I think I've always been filled with compassion and just really wanting to be gracious to people, be kind to one another and help people live beyond the place they were in. Because I understood that when tragedy and drama and trauma happen, you can get stuck there. And, yeah. and so I would meet people who would be stuck in the past somewhere. And I'm thinking, man, that was 20 years ago. That was five months ago. That was two weeks ago. You're still dealing with that. And to be able to meet people where they are and walk with them from that place to where they need to be and where they desire to be. And so what, what wanted me to be involved in this was just seeing so many hurting people and realizing that you didn't have to be down and out because life had dealt you a bad hand. You got to learn how to play what you got and, and make the best of it. And I think I've been doing that all my life, no matter what obstacles I've had to deal with, no matter what I've had to overcome, I figure out how to keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. And, and definitely your personality is that, is that you, uh, <laughs> you live out loud. Uh, you're bold in everything that you do with your look, yes, with, your look with your voice, <laughs> with everything. And what I really love is that uh, you just had a birthday. Yeah, <laughs> you I turned a whole 63. Yeah. So, you know, listen, so I do theme parties. I'm, I'm a party girl. And it's funny because some people know me as this serious, focused person who does mental health counseling, who deals with grief and loss. But on the flip side of that, man, I live life. And so just having fun, traveling, having parties. And so when I do parties, it's not just a let's get together. It's let's get together and it's a theme involved with it. So for my birthday, I did a superhero thing. And I got to tell you, Louisa, I probably was the biggest kid in the house at 63 years old. <laughs> I, I, was, I got a chance to be Captain Marvel. I had a shield and everything. And I even dressed up in full costume. My, my husband laughed. He says, you actually put on a cat suit and high heel shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, yeah, and I thought it's not about being the, the, the best shaped person in the room, but it's about this is the shape I got. And I'm working with it. And, and it didn't look all bad, you know, but I got Batman to come and the Batmobile. We rode around the city, got a chance to go visit the police department and help fight crime. And so yeah, I it was it. just a great day. And I, I really appreciated that the people I invited also dressed up in costume. And so I thought, man, a group of people who know how to have a good time. And I think we need to learn how to live out loud as we show kindness out loud. Because again, you only get one life and whatever it is you're going through, whatever it is you're dealing with, enjoy the, 
moment. Live, live, live. I can't stress that enough. Live. And so I definitely got a good time on my birthday. 63 years old, hanging out, being a superhero. <laughs> I love it. And I love, I love the fact that you live your message. Like you are just like, this is who I am. And I am mm -hmm. not going to apologize for that. And how do you help your clients get there, get that kind of joy that you want? Yeah. You know, so first of all, let me say that the joy of the Lord is my strength. So I start there. My, my yeah. relationship with God really helps in terms of having the right perspective, having the right attitude. And so just trying to encourage people that whatever your faith is, to live your faith, to apply what it is that you believe. And so I have friends of a lot of different faiths and cultures. And so I'm not trying to persuade them into what I believe, but whatever you believe, live it. And so when I think about working with clients, part of what I try to do is help them think through and dream big. You know, what did you want to be when you were little? What were your visions? What were your dreams? And to realize that those things are still possible. You don't have to give up on what you wanted because life has happened to you. Life will keep happening to you. But then how do you make the best of that? And keep a plan or strategy for their lives so that they can begin to see a brighter future. And realize that where you are now is not where you have to stay. Whatever messages you've received, whatever negative things people have said to you, you can almost like wash all that off and start afresh and start anew. I love that. So you're all about, you know, living right now, starting right now, because time waits for yes. no one. So what do you want to talk about in regards Absolutely. to that? Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting from a, a client I had this morning, it was a new person and I was telling him about my scope of practice. And so my scope of practice, first of all, is from a biblical framework. I believe people need God, but the goal is not to beat you up with the Bible or to condemn you or make you feel guilty in any way. But then beyond that, I tend to be present and future focused, meaning that wherever you are now, let's figure out how you got here and where you want to go. And so we don't necessarily spend a lot of time tracing roots of dysfunction. You know, so we don't need to talk about what happened to you when you were two years old or five years old or seven years old, unless those things are impacting you right now. And so uh -huh. some people have le dealt with some really traumatic situations. And so maybe it was molestation or domestic. But, and those things may impact your, your uh, mental capacity. It may impact your thinking ability and how you resolve issues and problems, at which point we need to talk about that. But if those things aren't impacting you now, let's figure out where do you want to go and then figure out how to get there. And, and so when I think about scope of practice, again, I tend to be future focused and present focused right here, right now. What do you need to do? And so the question I often ask people is what now? What next? Whatever happened to you? What now? What next? And if you think about that all day long, it'll keep you moving forward. What now? What next? That is beautiful. And that's so powerful because like you said, we can't do anything about what happened in the past. And can't so change the past. can't change it. And so what now? What are you going to do now? And then what are you going to do next? Those are huge conversations. Those are huge questions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you need to look at yourself and ask. Because again, the past is the past. And although it was traumatic and it happened, right. and it was all of the things, it was all of the emotions, but what mm -hmm. are you going to do now? Yeah, I think it was Chuck Swindoll said that life is a matter of perspective. It's 10% what happened to you, but then 90% how you process it, what you think about it. And so if you think, oh my God, this is terrible. I can't make it. Nothing good ever happens. That's the life you live. But if you think, yeah, that was a terrible situation, but I'm not a terrible person and I can move forward and I can grow from this and I can handle this. That's what you live. And so, again, you have to change your thinking. You know, it says a, a man becomes what he think, you know, as a man think is so easy. And so you got to think the right things and do the right things. Your behavior will follow what it is that you're thinking. And, and so, Louisa, when I think about you, I just make this big smile on my face. I think Louisa is somewhere being kind. And so because you're being kind, kindness is just drawn to you. I mean, kind people want to be around the joy that you bring. So that's what I'm trying to help people realize is that you want to be able to draw in the right energy and the right strength from the people that you connect with. So you got to connect with people who are like minded and who want what you want out of life and not stick around with people who aren't doing anything because you'll become just like them. Exactly. Exactly. I had. um <laughs> well, somebody used to say it was a, my my pastor uh, 
she uh -huh. uh, died a few years ago, but she used to say, if you hang around the barbershop long enough, you'll get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Meaning, if you hang around people who aren't doing great things or whatever, whether it's you know mm -hmm. physically or mentally, you start thinking like them. So you need to Absolutely. elevate. You need to elevate your 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 thinking, and you need to elevate the people that are around you as well. Right, right. I don't remember what company it was, but they talked about the, your your uh, Faye Five on your phone. So it's like, who are those five people that you call most of the time that you spend your time with? If you looked at your your favorite five people according to your phone, those are the people you make the phone calls to or who call you the most, and just do a quick assessment. You know, what's their income level? What, what's their future? What's their focus? What are they dealing with in their life? Are, are they are they in good health? What's their faith? Because again, your life probably lines up with that group. If you find that you're at the top of those five in every category, you need another five because <laughs> you always want to be with a group of people who <laughs> cause you to rise to the occasion. So don't feel like, you know, I'm, I'm good. I'm the best in my group. Being the best in your group is not a good thing. <laughs> right. you know, best in this group, let's get another group so you can grow with that group and then get another group and grow with that group. You want to always be growing and advancing in your life. You know, I'm so thankful for the people that God allows me to be around. And I tell you, every now and again, I'll stop and pray and say, Lord, send new people. Because new people add fresh perspective. New people help you see the world from a way that you haven't seen it before. It helps you peek around the corner and see it from a different angle. And, and so even if you're watching this show and you're saying, really, call me. <laughs> My information will be posted. <laughs> Email me. Check out the website, drsabrinablack.com. Connect with me. I love connecting with people. And that's one of the things right now, Louise, that I got to tell you I miss most. I tell you I miss traveling. But man, I miss being with people. And so I was so glad to have that birthday party, even though we had the social distance. Yeah. I got a chance to see people live. I got one to hug everybody. So for the people I didn't get to hug, mm, a big hugs to all of you, mm, a book kisses to all of you. And we will be together again soon. But in the meantime, I still we can some platforms like this. You know, for StreamYard and Zoom and Google Hangout and uh, Messenger Meeting, whatever you can do. But try to connect with people, make some phone calls, do some FaceTimes. But you got to stay in touch because people matter. Yes. So what is your advice to people? Because my mom is struggling right now because she wants to mm -hmm. gather. And we have a, a very large family. She's the oldest of 16. So, you know, mm -hmm. family gatherings are always big. But this yeah. year, you know, we're not going to do that because of COVID-19. So what is your mm -hmm. advice to people who want to gather and want to do all that, but know they can't? And so they're kind of sad about it. Yeah. So the sadness is real, Louisa. I'm, I'm glad to hear about your mom and that big family. I love big families. My mom was one of 17, uh, 12, lived to old age. And, you know, but when you talk about gathering, for the holiday or for anything at this point, especially like right now in November COVID season, you got to gather with the people in your household. Yeah. Not the people in your family. So if they don't live there, you won't be with them for Thanksgiving. And, you, and, and again, I know people are willing to take the risk. And, and what I hear people say a lot is, well, you know, I, I'm safe in my house. I'm doing social distancing and they're doing social distancing. And I know they haven't gone anywhere. And so four households are going to try to get together because none of us have been any place except for stopping to get gas on the way and stopping mm. to pick up pops on the way and stopping right. to get ice on the way. And all of those stops put you at risk. They put you in danger. And so it's better to not stop anyway and stay home. So again, how do you connect? Definitely make the phone calls. You know, it says that's just that's the call away. Make a phone call to somebody, text somebody. You can start sending cards right now, now Thanksgiving cards. Start sending your Christmas cards out. There are other ways to stay in touch. One of the things I found, uh, Louisa, on social media is that People are doing all kinds of really cool stuff online. They're doing birthday parties online. They're doing yeah. uh, scavenger hunts online. Just creative ideas. I mean, I have a cousin, Letitia. Man, she's like the, the game maestro. And so <laughs> her and I, you know, we go back and forth. Who can come up with more games and activities? But she has me beat by far. But she is always coming up with something fun for people to do online. And, and so she almost can start a business. Uh, here's a new idea for you can do for your shower, a new idea for your party, a new idea for your anniversary. 
but you get to do something. And you think about the holiday, don't see it as I'm sad we can't be together. See it as I'm glad you're going to be alive. Yes. You know, we have to begin to put living above just what we desire. You know, I, right. I desire to live long life, not just to see you tomorrow. I want to see you for days to come. You know, I remember when, when COVID first started, I was telling people then, you know, it is my heart's desire to be part of the remnant that remains. And, and so and to do that, then you got to make sure that you're maintaining those social distances, putting those protocols in place, wearing your mask, washing your hands. I mean, all the stuff we used to talk about, you don't even hear about that anymore now. But if you think about it, in March, all you heard was wash your hand commercials. It was wash your <laughs> yeah. hands and jingles. It was all the videos about how to stay safe. And now people have just gotten casual. You cannot get casual if you want to live. So Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. give thanks that people are alive. Give thanks that people are healthy. Give thanks that you'll get a chance to see them again soon. But try not to do it on Thanksgiving if you can avoid it. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. Because when it first started, I mean, but that goes with everything, right? Like mm -hmm. when something major happens, everyone is on it. They're washing their hands. Uh, when the George Floyd uh, situation happened, everybody was all about social justice and, and yes. this, that, and the other. But then as the time goes by, mm -hmm. people become more complacent. But those things still need to be in place yes. because it's still out there, right? Like nothing yes. has really changed, but we still have to do our part. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely you got to do your part. And again, when you think about what people's platforms are, you talk about the things that matter to you. You talk about the things that are important to you. And so living life is important. <laughs> talk about that. And that's why I'm encouraging people, if you can, and again, I know everybody can't do it and everybody yeah. will do it, but if you're able to. So even when I think about this holiday, you know, for Thanksgiving, that's one of my husband's favorite holidays, Thanksgiving. Every year we would do a dinner for almost 45 to 50 people. Wow. You know, he didn't want to invite single people over. He, we didn't know, didn't cook. A lot of his brothers from his fraternity would come over. We'd have family over. And we were just really excited to be able to provide meals for the family. But this year, we started telling people in September, we will not be hosting Thanksgiving. You will not be coming here. And that was before it even spiked again. Yeah. But we were just like, no, it's not going to be wise to gather. You know, my sister was going to come here from Chicago. You know, my brother was going to come in and just different places. It was like, no, maybe not. But so I thought about that. My parents are elderly. My mom's birthday is coming up. Happy birthday, mom, if you're watching. Her birthday is coming Saturday. She's going to be 82 years old. And, you know, again, she's high risk because she's older. My yeah. father is 84 years old. He just had some health challenges. And, you know, again, I don't want to put them at risk, but I would love to spend the holiday with them. So my husband and I have been talking about that. I'm going to probably go over this weekend because to celebrate my mom's birthday. But I'm going to end up staying there the rest of the month, probably. Okay. Which means my, my husband will end up being home. For Thanksgiving, because again, I, I can't go back and forth and come back and be with him, then go back and be with them. Yeah. And so we've been yeah. talking about that now. And so if, as a family, you may need to decide what are you going to do? Who are you going to be with? Get there and stay there because you can't yeah. go back and forth. So I'll show up Sunday for her birthday. I'll stay through uh, the holiday for Thanksgiving. I'll roll into December. And then at some point, hopefully things will calm down and I'll make it back home. It's helpful that I don't stay far. I'm six minutes away. So if something happens, my husband can at least come knock on the door and I can see him and blow kisses through the door. Yeah, yeah. You know? But uh, you got to have good relationships to do stuff like that, too. So if your marriage is falling apart, don't leave home. <laughs> like I say, we've been married over 35 years. We have an amazing relationship. He's an incredible guy. Louisa, he is the guy who would be Mr. Kindness. I mean, oh, I he, can, he yeah. can be on the, the, the uh, Make uh, Kind Loud poster because he is thoughtful. He is considerate. He is generous. He comes up with the most amazing gifts. And, it, and he, he just surprises you out of the blue. And when yeah. I think about making kind loud, that's what kindness does. Kindness is the person who is doing little things that you wouldn't expect. And, and that would be my husband, Jose. He, he is all about kindness. I love that. And I would love to chat with Jose and, and get his thing on life and, and see how, why he is the way he is. I love that. That would be great. I'll make sure I let him know that because he also has great camera presence too. You got to know he's a character. So even for my birthday party, he decided to be the Joker. 
Okay. <laughs> you can't have superheroes without a villain of some sort. So yeah. he had a double mask on that he'd pull down where he'd be smiling and then he'd be going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he, he he keeps me laughing and I'm, I'm just so thankful to be married to him and just what a blessed woman I am to have him. There's fresh flowers on the table. He provides, he does breakfast in bed. Yeah, he cooks dinners. I mean, man. And no, he does not have a brother. So <laughs> all you want to know, is there another one like him? I'm sure they broke the mold after they made Jose. But he is amazing. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love how boastful you are about it. Yeah. So <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, again, it's, it's a lot going on in, in the city, a lot going on in our country. But but I'm, I'm just really thankful for moments like this where we really can pause and talk dealing with such heavy things. You know, um, we talked about the conversation on race that's going on right now and, and dealing with the topic of resilience for the rest of the month of November. But I'm also doing a lot of grief work right now because okay. people have lost so many people. You know, during this year, and, and it's not just to death, but you know, just separations. There've been a lot of divorces, and people have lost basic freedoms. You know, just the freedom to go out of the house, as we're talking right. about now. Some people are going to be grieving the idea that they're not going to get to do Thanksgiving the way they normally do it. They're going to be grieving having to be alone for the holiday. They're going to be grieving not having the big turkey dinners yeah. and the ham dinners and all of that for the holiday. And so I, I have a partner, um, Rhonda Smith, and so her and I are working on another book project together, but we're doing a seminar this weekend dealing with the issue of grief, but it's from a very specific perspective. It's talking about the body blues because okay. so often people don't realize a lot of the aches and the pains that they're dealing with are because they're grieving, you know, and so it's not just all the emotional things that we hear about or the psychological things, but it's also the physical manifestations that happen. So if you're having headaches or back aches or stomach aches or difficulty sleeping and things like that, it may be that your body is trying to get your attention to say, mm -hmm. I'm grieving. Yeah. You know? uh, because you got to think about it. When when COVID hit in March, it's just like it, it was like a, we just fell in a black hole almost. It's like so many things were happening so rapidly. People didn't have time to process what they were going through. Right. And so we realized that a lot of grief may be lodged in different parts of your body. And that may be what you're feeling. And it may be grief from past uh, years that's now been triggered by all the stuff that you're dealing with. So this Body Blues Us uh, webinar that we're doing tomorrow will really help people process what it is that they're going through so they can get back to making kind loud. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to make it loud when you're in pain. Right, right. And I love that you are touching on so much, so many different things. The grief that's happening, that's manifesting in your body mm -hmm. because you haven't really processed it. Uh, right. these, these deep conversations, you know, how do we be resilient in these hard times? Like you're hitting on huge, huge topics mm. that people need to hear right now because they don't they don't understand and know necessarily how to process it themselves. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so, so I put in the chat section information regarding the um, the grief seminar. So if people are interested in attending that, that is coming up this Saturday. It's going to be offered at two different times. It's at 10 a.m. and at 2 p.m. And that's Eastern Standard Time. So that way, whatever time zone you're in, you know, even for our friends all around the world, they can click in and join the seminar and it will be recorded. So if you want to do it on demand later, you'd be able to do that as well. But I really appreciate you saying that, Louisa, because even though I like to have fun and, and yeah. live life and enjoy it, that there is a seriousness about things, too. And, and I do try to do what's relevant. And so, like I said, the conversations on race that I've been having, uh, conversations with you about kindness and conversations with others, the webinars on grief. You know, we did the Mental Health Monday at the beginning of the year. That was like a, a give back to people who couldn't afford to do therapy, but who were in desperate need of help. Yeah. So that was like getting some free help online. You know, and, and so I do want to do what matters because I, I do believe in making a difference. I, I believe I'm here on purpose, for a purpose. And I want to be able to live my purpose out. And I don't plan to take nothing to the grave with me. I want to pour it all out. We pour it out like a drink offering, as Paul said. And Paul is one of my heroes, you know. So yeah, yeah. But, but yeah live loud, live loud, make kind loud. I love it. And I love pour it all out because you can't take it with you, right? Can't um, take it with you. The whole point is that you, everyone has their own particular gift. They were born, mm -hmm. like you just said, on purpose, for a purpose. 
And um, it's up to you to tap into that and yeah. to pour it all out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. It has been such a joy and a pleasure talking to you. And I could just thank talk you, to you Louisa. forever. You are amazing. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> so keep, keep doing exactly what you're doing. And, um, you know, whatever I can do to help, please let me know. I would definitely uh, love to continue these conversations with you um, from now and into the future. So thank you again so much. Yes. Thank you. And if people get a chance to go to the website, I do have some uh, free giveaways on there. When you go there, you'll see a page that comes up right away and just put your information in. You can get some free giveaways. Also have a lot of great resources there. And one of the things I would encourage you for a holiday reading is live right now. And uh, I have a copy of that right here by me. Uh, live right now. And if you talk about living right now, it talks about making kind loud. If you live right and live right now, starting today, you'll be able to make kind loud. And so again, just encourage you to uh, connect. Remember, you're looking for a friend, looking for a counselor, looking for a coach. I'm here. Thanks, Louisa. It's been so good being with you. You're welcome. And thank you. And this has been a beautiful conversation on Make Kind Loud, conversations that turn up the volume. Dr. Sabrina Black has dropped so many beautiful nuggets, but the one that stands out most to me is her joy and the fact about living right now and living out loud because we don't know when our time is up. So let's live mm -hmm. to the fullest and pour out all that we can pour out because you cannot take it with you. Thanks again, Dr. Black. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We'll see you next week on another episode of Make Kind Loud, conversations that turn up the volume.